Berlin Select Board meeting of Monday, April 20th, 2020 to order. Um, who all is here with us, Dana? We have um, Justin Lawrence. We have Flo Smith. We have Angelina Capron, yourself, uh, Diane Isabel, the treasurer, and myself, town administrator. Uh, I do not see John yet. Uh, Chief Wolf is on the line with us. Rob Allen is on the line with us. And David Delcor from Times Argus. Okay. Have I forgotten okay. anyone? Oh, Tom, sorry. Right in the middle. Yep. Um, oh, here's John now. Well, why don't we take and give it another few minutes? Um, I assume there is no additions or changes to the agenda. Don't assume that because there are. <laughs> uh huh. And are you ready? Are you ready for them? Sure. I would like to add uh, the discussion on Crosstown Road. Um, I would like to have a discussion about the Conservation Commission's footbridge. I need to have the liquor board to meet, and I'm going to need an executive session at the end of this meeting. Hi, John. Okay. Hi. Uh, Dana, is it also possible to talk about the um, no parking situation going on by the pond on Mirror Mirror Lake Road? We can add that, Brad. No parking on on Mirror Lake Road. I think is it Mirror Lake? Yeah. Or Brookfield Road. Mirror. Okay. okay. You have that, Brad? Yeah. Okay, uh, any public comment? Uh, hearing none, treasurer's report, Diane. Okay, um, last, the last meeting that we had, um, I was talking a little bit about property taxes when they're due May 15th, and now we are, you know, we're not gonna be open to the public. So I've had a, a couple of people call and ask, well, are you going to uh, put the date back or are you gonna still uh, charge penalties and interest? At this point in time, we have to, because uh, it's been voted by the town at town meeting. However, I was told today by Dana and by our attorney that the legislature is talking about this and they're trying to create deadlines for property taxes that we could set ourselves and also set ourselves up for grace periods for penalties and interest. However, with that being said, um, the towns are still responsible for paying their state taxes, which means the educational tax on time, which means they have to be paid by June 15th. And if we don't pay it by June 15th, there's 8% penalty. So I just want to make you aware of that. I don't know, uh, at this point in time, I'm going on the assumption that uh, the taxes are gonna be due May 15th and on May 16th, if they're not paid, this could be penalty and interest. And I will keep you aware if there are changes with the legislature, um, that we could look at at a later time, but I just thought I'd make you aware that that is still in the works. Okay. And that's all I've got at this point. Uh, Diane, uh -huh. um, with, um, with the uh, property taxes, um, if the legislature does change it, that the, you don't have to collect taxes to later, do we have enough in the budget or in the, in the bank to take and maintain uh, running the town for say a month? Well, I'm gonna need to collect tax money uh, so that I can pay the school. I guess that's my, most, my biggest concern. Yeah. Do we have a comfortable amount in the bank right now? Yes, but I do need to collect some of that money at least uh, to pay the school taxes. Fortunately for us, uh, the very when we start collecting taxes in August, I have a lot of people who pay for the entire year. So that keeps our bank account very solid. However, as we're getting towards the end of the fiscal year, um, we will not have as much. And um, if, the, if the legislature says that we can put the, uh, the date back, that would be the date that we choose, not the leg legislature. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if we'd have enough to, to take 
they can uh, help cushion the town a little bit? I think it would be very difficult with what we have in the bank after the school payment. Um, yeah. We would have to go for a tan note. Yeah. So how much exactly, how many operating days do we have uh, in the bank? Meaning how many, how much money do we have? How many days would it last? Oh, let's see. Cause right now, and I'm just trying to think of where I'm at. Cause right now I have like over a million dollars, um, which, you know, like I say, without school taxes, cause the school taxes are like 1 million six. So, you know, I have to collect at least another, another, Half a million to million dollars in order to make it, just to make those taxes for the school. Okay. Okay. But you know, right now we're in very good shape, as long as I can collect most of the taxes, which I do feel most people will pay us, and most businesses will pay us at this time for the May ones, anyways. Okay. Nothing else, then, Diane. Uh, no. Uh, no. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda is swim lessons. Okay, so I guess I can speak to that too. I have spoken to Rachel uh, Giroux, and she's the one that is on the um, recreation board. And I asked her to join the meeting, and obviously she hasn't at this point in time. I don't know if there's going to be swim lessons or not. I know we spoke about it a little bit. At the uh, and I, could, I can tell you right now, we do have some money in reserves for the recreation board. I looked it up. And they have like eighty nine hundred and seventy one dollars in reserves that we could spend if you choose to spend some of that money on swim lessons, if they're even going to occur. Well, the thing there is, is, um, is uh, first and uh, is it first and fitness? It's not first and fitness. It's, it's still going to be Montpelier as far as I know this year. Well, is, have you heard if Montpelier is going to open the pool? I haven't heard that. See that I feel they probably are not going to be, but Rachel Giroux is not answering my emails. I got you. Uh, how much was set aside for the swim lessons? Well, normally what we do is we provide twenty five dollars um, per you know, per child up to a thousand dollar limit, and in the past we normally run about eight hundred dollars. No, those funds also are removed from their reserve account, the rec reserve account. Yes. Yes. Okay. Anything else on swim lessons? No. No. Okay. Uh, this one must be you, Diane. The impact on town revenues. I'm actually, sorry, I didn't I think hear it's, that. Sorry, it's that. actually me. It's actually me. Okay. okay. Um, and I had sent a memo out. I don't know if you need me to go over it if you had questions. Um, I think in one sense we are fortunate that because our revenues are somewhat limited anyway, um, this situation doesn't impact them like it does over in Montpelier or Barry City. Um, I do expect a little less revenue in the town clerk's line and probably less revenue in the zoning line. And then, of course, um, we don't know how, how many unpaid taxes there are going to be. Um, so I think as far as not including taxes, we're looking at something like $10,000. And I have not heard have not if the heard state if the is state changing is anything changing with the pilot with the programs. programs. That would be a, that would a be big, a, that's a big part of our part of revenues. Our revenues. Yeah. Um, we do have a healthy cash flow. Healthy cash flow. And, and it would be nice to say that, that way, but, that way, but if, if, we if we do what we've just spoken about, we may have to go out for a can note. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Discussion on the spending and hiring freeze. That was on the, um, I, one member asked about talking about it. So um, that's why I put it on there. Okay. 
So I asked for this item to be on there for consideration uh, based on where we are with uh, COVID-19, the, the response, um, everyone's still at home. You know, is it a right time to uh, put on a spending, spending and hiring freeze? The state has um, limit our expenses to uh, essential items only and um, hold as much money as possible to uh, limit exposure in the future. Well, the thing, the thing there is, um, I mean, as far as the town goes, we don't have a surplus of labor. Uh, we're having a uh, road form is, is, is uh, retiring, and I can't see having a three-man road crew when we just kind of make do with the formula. Plus the fact we have to take and have uh, somebody as a... Uh, the uh, foreman in that crew, in that crew. And, and then you've got, um, you've got uh, uh, spending, uh, uh, spending free, freeze. freeze. I mean, for the most part, the most part all, of all of our expenses are kind of fixed. Kind of fixed. The only thing we don't have that's fixed is labor costs, and we have a union contract with the police. And then uh, the only one else is the uh, office help and um, the road crew. Hey, John, well, it would be, it would be, it would be helpful if people who aren't speaking would mute themselves so we don't get the bat um, echo. How's that working? How's that working? I think, Danny, you muted yourself. I did. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. <laughs> so, John, what did you have in mind? So... I was looking at the the warrant, the, the money that we spent, uh, the money the money on uh, stone that we recently spent. What did we spend? Like forty six thousand dollars on stone. I'm not sure what road that was for or where it was for, but was it absolutely necessary right now? It probably was for those folks in the road. Hard hard telling, not knowing, right? We're, I mean, was it a, I mean, was it a, was it just to just gravel out a road or, or, you know, well, we, in the spring, all we do is maintain, we don't take in uh, doing any work as far as improving roads. We just try to make them passable. I remember years ago, we used to just push it off to the side, let it dry out, bring it back into the middle. Is that, would that have been something we could do this year or look to do save money in the future? Or how would that work? How would that work? Well, I mean, I brought, we brought a lot of stone in. A lot of our roads have gotten a lot more fill in them than they used to have. So I was just curious. I was just curious. The only thing I can speak to is the corner over here by um, the Three Mile Bridge is thawed out. And the frost is coming out in a pretty good clip. I'm sure you remember that, Justin. And what it's doing is. They are using, I assume they're using the stone to take and just fill to stiffen up these places that are soft. Any comments on that, Dana? I was going to say that it would, this would be a good conversation to have with Tim to see where he could um, economize on um, stone or gravel. Um, I'm not qualified really to answer for him on as far as what he's needed for the for the roads, the spring road problem. Um, whether it's overkill or not, I cannot speak to that. So I will. Well, of course, it's going to say it's not overkill, Dana. Not overkill, Dana. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Of course, he's going to say it's not overkill. I guess. Well, who's going to judge it? You get a weekly report from Tim. Do I have, do I, I'm, I have I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Do I have a weekly, have report, a weekly from him? report from him? 
Do you get no, a weekly report? No, 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 just conversation, no, just with, conversation him. with him. So, so you don't know from so week, to week, know from week to week what roads were repairing, which roads were not. Well, I do, um, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not really keeping track of how much stone he's putting on certain roads or what condition they're in before he does that. I certainly can get more information on that. Uh, Diane, on that gravel, did, is, uh, did Tim has... Uh, did he say what, what it was for? Is he building up his stockpile, or was he just? No, he didn't. You know, he didn't say what it's for, and because he doesn't come into the office anymore, it's really hard for me to get some of the information. Um, as you can tell, I mean, he's created um, a purchase order for it, but he did not discuss this one with me. And I don't know if he's stockpiling it or not at this point. I could certainly find out. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking that it's like two hundred lines. Yeah, uh, you know, because my office is right by the town garage, I do see uh, that they are constantly loading trucks. So they are. I know they're putting dirt on the roads, but how much or where, which roads, I am not certain. But I can certainly find out. Yeah. And we can have them give you a weekly report. I'm just I'm just wondering how he's being managed. And it sounds it sounds like the conversation, which is which is fine. I'm just if we're if we're gonna be serious about having a conversation about cutting the budget ten or fifteen percent, and we we say everything is um, fixed expense, uh, we're not ever gonna get to the the meat of it. I mean, we have to make some really hard decisions in order to do that. And if everyone's good with where we are and they are locked in, then, locked in, then that, that's okay. That's where we where we can be as a board. But um, you know, if we're serious about cutting, we need to we need to look at everything. Dana, what are your thoughts? Are there any areas where you feel like the town could save some money? Well, that, you know, the gravel and stone is probably a good place to start. And I think uh, where what I think John is saying, I think it's a good idea to have a, a weekly report and to see what we can live without um, and what we can safely live without. Um, as far as I think I can sit down with department heads and I'm sure we can economize on things, but I honestly don't think we have an awful lot of wiggle room, but that would be a board decision. Um, our projects are probably going to come to a screeching halt. Um, we understand that. Um, what is the board's thoughts of doing an across the board cut in July? You'd have to let go people. Bill, do you have something to add? I see you shaking your head, so you can take yourself off mute and join the conversation if you'd like. Well, I'm not trying to make this adversarial, but there's a lot of costs that are built in that there's not a lot of room to save money. I mean, I I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I applaud that and I embrace that, but a lot of our costs, particularly on my side of the department, are fixed and there's nothing, I haven't asked for anything extra. I'm not, I'm not adding people, I'm, I'm just, I'm just got a budget that I get by. I, I hear you. And, you know, if we weren't in this situation, you know, I, I, I don't think we would be asking this, but, you know, if, if everyone across the board took a 15% pay cut, and I'm not suggesting that, I'm just saying, like, at home, you're going to have to go out things, right? What are those things that you cut based on, well, I have fixed costs, I have my heating, I have my food, I have this, I have that, but to get to, you know, 10% less or 15% less. I mean, that's what we all have to do. And that's all I'm asking is, you know, when it gets tight in this type of situation where, you know, we have 80,000 people unemployed at the moment, how do, 
you know, that's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be able to pay property tax, um, depending on where they prioritize their money. So I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, that that's our revenue, right? That's our, yes, that's our main bucket of revenue. And sure, we can, we can do more tax sales, but um, I don't like to do that. Um, it's, it's certainly in, in this type of uh, situation. And I think anywhere we can, you know, it, if it's staff layoff, so, you know, that's always a last resort for me. But uh, when it comes to, I, I don't know how many Berlin families, but there's probably quite a few that are unemployed right now and not able to, to pay bills. I would offer, though, um, I'm being a person down now, cutting staff places my officer safety in jeopardy and also places the community in jeopardy by cutting my staff. And I just don't have that flexibility. Diane, if we yeah. were to look at the, if we were to look at the capital budget on new equipment. The capital, but uh, there's so many echoes. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? The capital budget on new equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's coming up for a uh, purchase this year? Well, I know that Tim had wanted a grader, um, and I think that was all for equipment. Uh, the other thing we were talking about was a culvert, which we probably will have to do. And I think what we were trying to do was to set aside $50,000 in a reserve every year, if we could, towards buying equipment in the future, so we would not have to be uh, financing it. Yeah. I suggested right. that in my memo. Can I can I go back, Bill? I just had a quick question. I understand town safety. I understand officers in jeopardy. Um, do you provide a? I mean, how many? We don't have twenty four seven. I know that's been your goal for coverage for a long time. Um, do we have? Do we have any room whatsoever where we could reduce coverage and make sure everybody was safe and make sure? that your officers were safe and the town had sufficient coverage. I mean, I know that we obviously have a contingency plan should Berlin not be available to Berlin residents. Um, just Well, just here's the thing. I mean, um, and we'll speak more in executive session, but I mean, I have one that's out, one officer that's out and we'll be out till August. Um, my, I, I'm, I'm filling some of the overnights with some part-time people waiting for the academy to complete for my the two can or the can that we have in the academy. So we're, we don't have 24 hours coverage completely now. We just uh, we were able to do it four days a week, and I'm fill, I'm using, utilizing a part-time officer to do those. But the point is, um, we're down a person already until at least August. So we're, we're really razor thin and with the homeless population that's been housed at the hilltop, our calls have increased. And I've been told on a couple of occasions by neighboring chiefs, look, you know, we've got our own work to do and you need to adequately staff your department. And the select board recognized this a couple of years ago and, and brought this department up to staff. and. Um, it's minimum staffing, basically. It's minimum staffing to keep my officers safe and keep the residents of this community safe. And I realize that this is a tough time, but I hate to see something that would jeopardize their safety or the, or the safety of the public. Hey, Bill, what does a fully loaded officer cost? I Meaning what's the, the fully outfitted cost uh, at time of fire? You mean for equipment, John, or? No, I'm talking, no, I'm uh, talking uh, full-time employee uh, benefits of the, the works. Well, it, depending on what <laughs> skill level they become, or experience level they start at, but they're a uh, couple, three uh, year level, their starting salary is, I think, in the mid 40s. And I don't know what the, uh, the benefits adds on to that package. Um, Dana, you would know, Dana, you would roughly, know. roughly, or ballpark, I guess. It's, it's in the annual report. Yeah. 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 I don't have the annual report in front of me, but I'm assuming. Yeah, and I didn't bring it home either. either. 
Yeah. I'm assuming it's probably about 30%. I, I would say you're right. I think it averages about eighty thousand dollars per officer. Eighty thousand total. Oh, I don't have the report here either. Okay. Is Flo on the call? Yes. I am. I am. Hi, Flo. Hi, Flo. Good evening. Well, you, you well, you had you some had thoughts on this. Is there anything you wanted to add? Well, I want to add that I totally concur with everything that's been said, and I know it would be very difficult. And I'm not saying where the cuts need to be. We'd have to take a harder look at that. But I'm leaning toward a 15% cut. And I think we definitely need either a special board meeting or a few special board meetings to really seriously look at everything because we're in unprecedented times right now. And I really do think that we need to take some form of a cut, maybe not 15%, but we should seriously consider a cut given the situation we're in. I Flo, how do you think, I mean, what's everybody's thoughts on how we should research this? I mean, where do you think we, as a board, we would get the best information to be able to make an educated decision? Anybody have any suggestions? I mean, we, I agree with you. We absolutely need to. Um, I just don't know where or how to do it most effectively. Uh, Diane, Diane, could you, could you uh, uh, take in uh, getting uh, or, uh, or uh, get a number uh, as far as, as the, the un, un uh, I don't want to say that. What we need is a number of the of, of the amount of monies that we can actually uh, reduce. Reduce. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so when we're talking, we're talking these percentages. Percentage we have to understand if we're talking 15% of the total budget or 15% of the budget of parts of the budget we can actually change. Okay. Could we, it's a it's a big difference between 15% of the total budget and 15% of what we can actually do. Oh, and I agree. I, I think that when Dana and I were working with this we were trying to go either 10% of the whole budget or 15% of the whole budget, uh, not with appropriations, the budget less the appropriations to come up with a number. Because obviously appropriations we can't do anything with. And that's where I think that we tried to show here are the projects we have going on. Uh, maybe, we don't, you know, maybe we don't buy a grader this year. Uh, maybe we don't pay Granger Road. You know, I'm thinking those were the types of things we were trying to show anyway. Not replace the culvert on Richardson. Right. Could, could we get each department head by chance to maybe look at their budget and show us what, if we had to do a 15% budget cut, what it would look like in, from them? I don't see why not. Why not? Doesn't that we make did sense? send you an analyzation of the budget, though, which I assume you got. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when yeah, would you like? I just, I just think that each department head probably knows a little better than we do. If push came to shove, what what they could actually do. So I, I think their opinion would be tremendously valuable in researching this and trying to come up with a way to do it. Well, that would be that would Bill be and Bill myself and, and Tim, and I guess. Tim, I guess. Could I offer something I from, offer the fire from the fire department? Certainly. Certainly. Absolutely, Joe. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So yes, go ahead. Go ahead. This uh, this stemmed from a conversation I had several weeks ago with one of the select board members, and it possibly looking at decreasing the the approved budget. Uh, at first, uh, we were talking first, about 10 percent, and then it moved to 15. But I can tell you that the fire department has uh, a fairly lean um, budget, but we have met several times, and we have come up with um, something less than 10 percent. Um, I'm not willing to share it. 
uh, I don't necessarily think I approve all of it myself, but uh, but we're working on it just in case you guys want to uh, do something like that on your side. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be quiet now. Um, so what would you, so you like us to do? Well, I would say taking uh, uh, find out what the uh, the percentages are of the, of the of the uh, budget we can fiddle with, and then we can take and go from there. Okay. Okay. So what you're saying, Brad? You wouldn't want you wouldn't want like Bill, Tim, or to look at maybe areas where they think possibly what it would look like if we reduced it 15 percent. Well, the the thing with the police department, you still have that contract in effect. Um, I really don't want to open that back up. The only place I can see in the police and, and even the, the road is, is probably in the equipment purchases and uh, material purchases. I had a couple thoughts um, in, in this type of situation where, you know, maybe, maybe the in order not to cut people, in order to keep everyone employed, um, we could uh, talk with the union, we could talk with our employees, uh, you know, get them all together, so to speak, and, and talk about a uh, pay cut for the year that would keep everyone employed. Uh, but potentially across the board, uh, a 10% cut, which I think our payroll for the year is just over a million dollars. Um, that would give us $100,000 right there um, off the top um, on, the, on the payroll side. I, I don't know what others think about that, but as I said before, I don't, I don't like to lay people off. Um, it's always a last resort, but... Um, in this type of situation, especially with part of the staff being union, um, I know unions would rather sometimes take us a, a, a pay cut than than to go ahead and um, reduce some of its membership. Just an idea. Anything else on this? What about the new cruiser? Have we ordered that Have yet? I plan on ordering it after July 1st. And the one that's coming offline now, then I'm going to get, I have one going down this week, the new one that we got by the last budget year to get, get put together. But the one that's coming offline has got over 100,000 miles on them. these cars. We, we normally have bought one a year just to keep the maintenance cost down and keep the safe vehicle under them. But, um, you know, that's, I haven't ordered, I have not ordered that in I, I think it would be worth taking a look at all of the, like everything. I mean, even down to that detail right now, even if it's a short delay, I mean, I, I really fear for everybody in town. Of course, one of the things that uh, is is uh, unknown is just how well we're going to come out of this. I mean, we may be a month behind, or we may be six months, or we may be a year behind. It's just hard to tell until we get some more information from the uh, the state and uh, see how things are going to take and come together. I, I agree with that. Agree you know, that. We, don't know, we don't know, but, um, but uh, you know, what I, I guess what I'd ask Dana is, have you, is, have you been looking, been looking into, into the CARE Act money CARE and CARE whether or not the local municipalities are eligible for any of that yet? I've looked at it, but I honestly don't know if we're going to be eligible for any of that. Um, until we can prove a loss of some sort.
one of the, just the, the thing that I'm really worried about is, is uh, making some uh, abrupt changes and then find out we reacted. Anyone else on this? I guess I'm, I guess looking, I'm looking for how to go forward. So we're going to meet with department heads and come up with what we can find in our budgets to uh, that aren't necessary. Um, perhaps we can talk about a 10% pay cut. Um, highway, I suppose, materials really is the issue. Well, I'm wondering if perhaps instead of a pay cut, we should take in, um, well, how to do this, uh, to take in, uh, if people, if you can get the uh, employees to take, take in uh, a pay cut for 10% or 15% or whatever it is for a couple of months and then take in, uh, see how it goes from there. Because once we once we have that run of information, then we can take and uh, see if we need to extend it for another couple of months, or it may not have to at all. It's hard to say. Dana, what if what if we ask um, department heads, uh, all department heads, to go ahead and uh, put together a budget? Uh, that that's minus ten percent. What does it look like? Where would they? Where would they? Okay. Okay. The culvert on Richardson Road. What's that one doing, Dana? Well, we've had the a lot of engineering work done on that. As you know, it's taken much longer than we had thought. Um, we could cancel that. Although Richardson Road, that's the only access to that neighborhood. Um, I, am um, I am thinking that that is that probably, that that probably about 150 to 160,000 to, 160, 160, to finish, that finish that project. Is that budgeted money already? Yes. That's in the capital That's money. It's in the $250,000 capital line. Well, I think we'll have to look at that too then. Um, what was the other culvert you were talking about? Um, there was Richardson Road that I was talking about. Um, okay. um, you know, we have a few projects that we wouldn't be able to do. The Lover's Lane Bridge would not be able to repair. Um, we wouldn't be able to, um, what, where was I going with this? But we wouldn't be able to do Richardson Road and the other culvert that is questionable on Fisher Road, but that wasn't in this year's budget. And we certainly couldn't replace the road grader. Um, although once they are done with the road grader and we can send it to Richmond, we, we're planning to, as you instructed us to. If that's still if that's the plan. The plan. Well, taken to defer the buying of a new grader, I would think to have that one um, refurbished would be a much more cost effective. I would agree. Um, and we had not budgeted money for the new grader. Okay. Anything more on the uh, hiring freeze or the spending? Discussion. Is so. So, for, from a spending perspective, our, our, Dana, are you know if one of the easy things that we can do is just have you put your eyes on all expenditures before they go out to make sure that you agree that they're essential. Okay. Okay. 
No, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on it? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, like, in, in, in my department, that's that's what I'm doing right now. Is anything oh, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, John. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, the especially in highway, uh, he has jobs that he has scheduled to do. And... And I need to have more of a conversation with them. Are these jobs are these absolutely jobs necessary, necessary or during or this time, during can we hold on those? I think that's what you're telling me and I'm agreeing with it. If you can, Dana, get a, uh, get a sense from Tim as far as our other departments, really uh, what Bill uh, Chief brought up on the uh, public safety part of it, because if if that Culver and Richardson Road fails, we've got what four or five families, and we'll be able to get in and out. No, I think there's more than that actually, but yes, yeah, you know. yeah. But the the thing would be just to take and have it so that uh, we have an idea or some sense as to what um, the what the what the public is going to take and you know they're going to, <laughs> there's more than one one way to suffer. And that is and one that I'm applying for a grant for again this year from VTrans. I have not heard of how VTrans grants are being affected. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If there's nothing else on this, we will we will meet meet and have something ready for you either at the next meeting or if you'd like to meet earlier than that. So I guess I'm looking for your suggestion. Well, I think next meeting will be soon enough. It'll give you plenty of time to get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Do I hear a motion? Can I have a motion on the permit? Dana, the account payable warrant number does it start with two zero one four six? Let Let me read it. Um, this would be to approve general funds accounts payable warrant two zero G. One nine with checks two oh one four six to two oh one seven five in the amount of forty three thousand five hundred seventeen dollars twenty two cents. Also to approve payroll warrant twenty dash twenty one for payroll from March twenty nine, twenty twenty to April eleven, twenty twenty. Paid on April 15, 2020, in the amount of forty one thousand nine forty one eighty two. Also to approve the March general journal entries, to approve the March reconciled bank statements for the general fund, the sewer commission, and the water division. And finally, the March budget status report, file balance, and delinquent tax report. Do I hear so move? So move. A second. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Carries. The Public Works Board discussion regarding change of allocation charges. Yes, that was yes, Rob that was is here to Rob speak to that, to that and Tom is here to speak to that. There was a question raised about the change in how the allocations are um, calculated, the cost of it. Okay, Tom, I'll, I'll start in. Uh, I'm Rob Allen. I'm the chair of the Public Works Board. Um, and what we have, uh, this topic is on the sewer side of things. And what we have, what we is, have about is about 60 to 70,000 gallons, gallons of allocation. Of allocation. It's, it's been, been issued to, issued to the, folks the folks 
in past years and it's still hanging out there as unused allocation. So what our pleasure would be to get that allocation back because it's a town asset have it so we could as as needed as needed um so so uh that's you know we're not going to take it away from folks that they have it but it it's it's time for us to start charging a little fee uh if they want to keep their allocation so i had a question about that and my I own where uh, 672 US 302, and that's a connected property with an allocation. So it was my understanding that properties like that weren't going to be charged for their allocations when unconnected allocations would be. And I was wondering what the difference was. I mean, I don't know if you could elaborate on your decision for that or not. Well, I will also say that, say that um, uh, we would we would plan to reimburse them if they if they gave the allocation back to the board. We would reimburse their their money that they paid for. Uh, so, if I understand you, Justin, you said you had you had allocation on some property. Well, I'm not speaking just about mine. I was just using yeah. that as an example. Yeah. So it's, it's so, allocated. So if you have a plan to use it, um, or maybe you don't have a plan, if you have a, a good plan to use it, then you certainly want to keep it uh, and have it available for you. But if you don't plan to use it, um, and we would like it back so we could issue it to other folks. And if you paid for it, we'll reimburse your money. So. I see Tom. I see you got your hand up. I don't know if you want to throw something in there, but go ahead. I, the answer to your question, Justin, is that the folks who are currently connected and uh, as the property you have on Route uh, 302 are paying for everything on the sewer side of the business. And so this harkens back to your earlier conversation that you just had about um, reducing costs to to the majority of this constituency is that as Rob mentioned, there is about 70,000 gallons of uh, allocation that has been taken and that the, the average age of that allocation is over 24 years old and they have not connected to the to the sewer system. So, so what the Public's Work Board has stated is that that, that allocation is a valuable asset and um, to, to help the, with the cost of the system as a whole, um, the, the Public's Work Board is going to assess a per gallon fee on those allocated unconnected um, customers. What this does for the vast majority of our customers is lower their rates. And I understand, I understand that's, that's a good thing. I, I was just curious, my biggest question is, it seems to me like I've got 8,000 gallons on the Barry Montpelier Road. And I'm not using it right now, regardless of where I'm at, regardless of what my future plans may be. I'm afraid that that, I don't know if it's targeting. I don't know if it's a bad thing. I don't, I mean, I'm just, I mean, it, it does seem like it could be subjective. Um, why wouldn't we charge everybody based on their allocation, regardless of whether it's connected or unconnected? Um, to me, I, what was the rash, what was the thought process behind only the unconnected? I, I get that you want it back, it's a valuable asset and it would help with the fixed cost, but why wouldn't we just charge based on allocation? Right now, the, the entire sewer budget is based on use on a per gallon basis. So all these connected customers are paying their allocation portion. Uh, um, it's not like they're not paying allocation. They're, they're paying for everything right now. But 
what we're saying is a way to to come up with a fair assessment of those folks who aren't connected but have an allocation they have no usage everybody else pays by usage on a per gallon basis what's a fair way to do that and what the public works board has has decided is that for the fixed cost portion of the sewer system based on allocation they uh they'll they should they should pay the fixed cost portion not the not the variable cost 50 percent of our our operation is variable cost because what we send to the city of montpelier for treatment that's variable but 50 percent isn't 50 percent is fixed cost and and so uh the board uh, agrees that these folks who have had this allocation an asset of the town for in excess of 24 years on average should pay something so 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 your statement of of everybody should pay by allocation we're not that way we're trying to change our billing we're it's a it's not an overnight process i think in the future you're going to see a billing uh two pieces of the billing like you see on the water side where we're using the water side as a as a good example where there's two pieces of the water uh bill one is for debt service and one is for usage and it, it will it won't be this this but this upcoming budget year but i i'm 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 shooting for 2021 2022 is that's how the the sewer budget will look there will actually be two pieces one for usage and one for the fixed cost call it allocation call it whatever you want to call it so do we have anybody other properties that have that are over allocated that they're not i mean what on average is everybody using 90 percent of their allocation and that's how we're recouping the fixed cost with the exception of this seventy thousand gallons uh, the vast majority of our customers are over allocated uh we have a we have an allocation granted of about four hundred thousand gallons and we have a, a an actual usage of about 180,000 gallons a day so the vast majority are so over it's a large over over allocation i'm sorry yes it's a large over allocation we are allocated to a lot of individual not necessarily just people there's people have a much larger allocation around they're actually using yeah people when people come in to request allocation they it, it's based on a state formula and history has shown that that state formula is pretty pretty conservative and it's, it's, typical households do, do not use as much as that formula shows so just how much is um your your you say 50 percent of your costs are uh, fixed how much is that in a say on a thousand gallons Brad, I, I can't, I, I can't come up with that number right now. That's not, that's not how I think about things. Like, it's, it's, what right now we charge, we charge a penny a gallon, half a, that's half a cent a gallon is fixed cost. So if, if you use a, a five thousand gallons uh, a quarter, half of that is fixed cost half of it is used. so other than taking other than back taking or repurchasing re these um, these allocations or the gal these this gallonage, gallonage. Um, um what are you going to do going with to the do uh ones who don't want to give it back are you going to take it or sell it back are you going to give them uh, or, or bill them for the 50 percent yes yes so sounds good to me sounds good to me i mean they 
if we have purchased it, well, the other question is, is, um, is the, is what they paid comparable with what they would have to pay to repurchase it now? The, the vast majority of this 70,000 gallons, uh, there was no purchase on it. Uh, we have about $7,000 on our books for the 70,000 gallons uh, that was allocated. So the vast majority, there wasn't even any allocation to charge to it. So they've been getting kind of a free run. Rob, I'll let you answer that one. Well, you know, I would use the term free ride. Many, many years many, ago, many years you ago. remember, Brad, but, remember, Brad, but um, most people here know that, 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 that when the when we first got allocation from the city of Montpelier, quite a lot of quite a lot of quite a lot of it was just given out given so out that so the that town of Berlin would start Berlin and bring in bring in business, bring in business. and there was no purchase. No purchase. Uh, it it wasn't it purchased. Wasn't a lot of it was just issued to developers. Um, and then at, at and some then point, some it became point necessary to start charging a fee for allocation. But a lot of that 70,000 says was issued way back in the way beginning and was not purchased by the individual. Yeah, I mean, was that when they started giving or when, 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 when the uh, allocations were given out? That was about the time Montpelier redid the sewer plant. Um, um, yeah, that, yeah, I don't that, know when they, when that's they, when they built their sewer plan, plan, I think. Was that back in the, uh, back, back in the, the, back in the, 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 the as I remember. Well, they had a plant they there, then they, there, they, they expanded it quite a bit. Quite a bit. Well, that would have been the time then, Brad, yeah. Okay. So do we pay this, we pay the city of Montpelier a fixed cost, a per, an allocation, an allocation we, per gallons of allocation that we have. If we need it, when need the time it, comes, for time comes for us to purchase new, to get more, 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 more allocation, we'll have to purchase it from Montpelier, yes. Right, but that doesn't have anything to do with our fixed cost today, right? I mean, if we've got, what if the town has 600,000 gallons of allocation total, right? Yes. And we've allocated roughly what four hundred thousand. That that's what Tom that's said. What yes. Tom said. Uh, about four sixty. Four sixty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that four sixty so or the six hundred thousand that we have in allocation from the city, do we don't have a fixed monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual charge associated with that? No. So that our fixed costs are just simply associated with our debt and our maintenance. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just, I mean, I get wanting that allocation back and wanting to get that back so we can reuse it, but we, A, I don't know that we, do we have an immediate need to reallocate that somewhere else? I'm just curious, I'm trying to get, figure this out. Well, we, it's, it's interesting, you know, we have this new town center uh, uh, and the, about a year old now, the, the uh, public support board commission, their engineer to come up with what, if there was complete build out on that new town center, what would it, what would it be from a wastewater standpoint? And it's about 250,000 gallons a day of a complete build out on that, um, uh, on the new town center. Is it, it's not gonna be built out immediately, but we're, you're already seeing uh, uh, applications that will probably be groundbreaking on that uh, 98 unit senior housing project over there this in May. Uh, there's a, a, another housing and, and uh, daycare uh, proposed over on the new town center. So, do we need all of it today? No, but it's been in, but again, it's been in the hands of, of folks for 24 years and, and they have not developed their projects. Right, I'm, I'm, I get that. So if a new development goes into the town in the new town center, 
they're going to pay an allocation fee that just went up to five dollars per gallon right correct correct and what does that cost us at the city of montpelier until we buy new allocation yeah, what do we pay the city of Montpelier for new allocation? Isn't it five dollars a gallon? That's a, a break even. The city has given us. We have a six hundred thousand alloc six hundred thousand gallon allocation now. If we if we buy above six hundred thousand gallons, then we're gonna have to buy purchase money. Yeah, and, and we that would be a negotiated price, Justin. I don't know what that would be right now. So right now, if you did a total build out at the uh, town center, you'd be 110,000 gallons short. Correct, without any other development in town. And how much allocation is out there that's not being used? About 70,000 gallons. So there's no way to spread that out to anybody at all. I mean, it just—I'm trying to wrap my head around, wrap my head around it. it. I get wanting the seventy thousand gallons back, but that doesn't fix the whole thing anyway. But I mean, obviously, I have eight thousand gallons on the Barry Montpelier Road. I'm not going to be charged like you're saying because I don't know if we don't have an ordinance in place to cover that because it hasn't been X number of years or what the issue is, but if I got 8,000 gallons and I'm not utilizing it, I would think that that would be no different than unconnected allocation. It, it seems to me like you would spread it across to everyone. In Justin's scenario that he's explaining, I mean, why why wouldn't he be charged the same as someone in the unallocate or the, the bucket that they're just leaving it unallocated and unused so so they're right now they're in, in, let, let's just say it's six hundred thousand dollar cost to run the sewer system everybody who is connected today is paying for that you could call it allocation you could call it, use, you could call it whatever you want to call it they're being paid out based on their usage though right that's the portion they're paying Correct. Correct. They're yeah. being paid paid for their usage, but so that well, I have so if I have zero usage, but I'm connected and I have eight thousand gallons a day, I'm definitely not paying proportionally. That's why I'm using that as an example because it's so skewed that I think that's where my concern is. Well, the the way the the the, the uh, Public's work board is looking at what fee to assess the unused, uh, um, the, the allocated unconnected is taking all allocation, dividing it by our fit, dividing our, uh, our fixed cost by our total allocation that's taken, and whatever that dollar is, let's just say it's 80 cents, so 80 cents. Uh, a gallon of unconnected uh, allocation charged to those folks who have taken allocation and not connected. Is there a way that the, has the works board looked at a way where they looked at it just simply based on allocation across the board for everybody? I mean, I mean that's simple. That's all no, I, not, not yet. I mean, they, they, they built on a per gallon. Uh, forever, I think, Rob. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been there. It's always I've been there. It's always that's that's common of other municipalities. Tom is to charge on a charge on for usage for usage. And, and so, so, so we're going to a, a billing system, trying to move to a billing system, which will which uh, will let us bill our fixed costs, not on a usage basis, because right now our fixed costs are are built. Build on, build on usage if our usage if our is usage down is which down, you know with, with uh the w way this year is now with with the um, covid 19 issue 
we have a potentially ha of having a, 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 a deficit on our on our books because everything is usage. What we want to go to is very similar as the water system. It's it's a split bill. Uh, the split for the fixed co fixed cost is covered, and then there's a usage piece. It's 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 the best management practices out there. Most utilities do it that way. Um, we just we just can't change it overnight. Well, Tom, how do you envision enacting this? Well, in the in the sewer ordinance that the town select board uh, adopted in January, it allows this us to do this. Are you going to give the owners of the allocation a chance to uh, sell it back or give it back, or, or uh, how, is, how do you see that working? So I've talked to nearly all, all these customers, and there's not a great deal of customers. There's maybe 20 customers that pulled this 70,000 down. I've talked to all of them, told them of the, the plan for the of the public's work board to go down this, uh, and they uh, they are choosing if they want to to receive an invoice and keep that allocation, or or rescind their allocation and give it back to the town. And how was that received? Do they seem receptive to making that change? Well, I well, nobody I, has nobody said is, uh, I've had I've had, I've had, I've had um, uh, I spoke to spoke one of the, the largest the parcels large today. Parcel. They have twenty five thousand gallons on one parcel. Uh, they believe they're and they didn't pay for any of that allocation. They believe they're going to give it back. And the rest of them? Have you heard back from them? Uh, this, uh, I've heard of a handful that uh, said they will likely give it back. They haven't. They haven't definitively said that. I've had two say they want to keep their allocation and pay for it on the go forward. Well, it sounds like it's going to work. Then. It makes sense to me the way you described it. Uh, Tom or uh, Rob, you have any more on this? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for explaining this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. Um, Dana Jeffrey Olski. Yeah, Jeff is on with you. Uh, he is working on a project on Route 2 for um, Capital City um, with new construction, and they wish the town's permission to extend water sewer lines. Um, from, it's Montpelier's water and sewer, not ours, um, over to the new site. So I'll let you speak with Jeff. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, my name is Jeff Oleski with Catamount Consulting Engineers. Uh, I'm a civil engineer for uh, the owners of the existing Capital City GMC car dealership. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with that site. And, uh, long story short is they own a, a few properties on the opposite side of Route 2 there. They've owned for some time. Uh, they're right now at 11. 89 Route 2 is an existing parking lot that supplements the existing car dealership. And then they also own a couple properties. Uh, one's 12 Marvin Road, and the other is 40 Goodnow Road um, that are kind of some residential pro properties on them now, but it's, they're really not being used. Um, and what they've, uh, they're looking at doing is essentially redeveloping all three of those lots on the south side of Route 2. Uh, the existing parking lot and these two residential properties with a new car dealership that would uh, house both Volkswagen and uh, Mazda. And long story short is we're, we're 
in a conceptual design phase right now, but we're trying to determine uh, the best way to serve this new uh, car dealership uh, from a water and sewer standpoint. Um, as some of you may be aware, the existing Capital City GMC facility is served by municipal water and sewer connections uh, to the city of Mount Pelier system directly uh, via directionally drilled services that go underneath uh, the Winooski River and tie into Mount Pelier's lines on Gallison Hill Road. Um, we've had preliminary conversations with both uh, Dana and Tom, um, as well as Kurt Modica from the city of Mount Pelier and kind of received uh, preliminary feedback from all parties that they'd be amenable to allowing us to extend these services um, underneath Route 2 uh, via directional drilling um, to essentially provide additional service, municipal water and sewer service to this new Volkswagen Mazda car dealership. Um, one thing I was prepared to do tonight, I, I don't know Dana, if you had an opportunity to share the, the plans, um, I'm happy to pull them up and share them on screen now if, if people would like me to do that or if they have access to them um, and they're at home. They can, they may have I had shared your letter. Your letter with, uh, I did not send them your conceptual drawings. Okay. Uh, if it's okay with the board now, I'd like to just share screen share um, the site plan existing and then the proposed site plan, maybe you can visualize it a little better if that's okay with you. Sure, go right ahead. Okay. So uh, right here, this is our overall existing condition site plan. Um, we have the existing Capital City GMC dealership here, um, directly across the street is the 1189 property that has existing parking lot here. Uh, this being Marvin Road, and this is Good Now Road. And these, this large property here is the 12 Marvin Road property and the 40 Good Now is here. And so what we'd be doing is removing this parking lot, removing these residential houses, and then ultimately going to um, pull up the, bear with me a second. That's not the one I'm looking for. So this would be the proposed site plan. Uh, just again, very conceptual nature, but the parking lot here would be the home to a new Volkswagen Mazda dealership. And these properties over here would be developed with supplemental parking areas. So the concept would be on the back side of the capital city and dealership here, we have municipal water and municipal sewer. From back behind the building, we directly drill underneath the existing parking lot to Capital City and Route 2 and provide water and sewer service directly to the building here via the City of Montpelier. Uh, we've got preliminary, again, preliminary approval from the City of Montpelier. And so we just figured uh, because these services are ultimately in the town of Berlin, it'd be best to, to share this concept with you and see if we get some type of preliminary approval as well so that we are confident we won't need to provide on-site water or sewer for this new facility. And uh, you know, I guess with that, I'll um, hand it back over to the board with any questions. Well, I personally see no problem with it. Looks good to me. Yeah, I know, just to clarify, I think that's what we're looking for is a, a preliminary approval from the select board so that we at least know the concept is good. There's obviously a lot of details to work out um, and we will do those in coordination with both the Agency of Transportation, City of Montpelier and the Town of Berlin Public Works so that everybody's comfortable with design plans as we move forward. I, I make the motion for preliminary approval if everyone's in agreement. Here a second. Here a second. I don't suppose I can second this. Sorry, I lost my <laughs> lost my microphone for a second. Sure, Jeff, try it. Sure, Jeff. Uh, I can try. I second. I second. <laughs> I'll second it. I'll second it. All in favor? Are there any further discussion on this? 
Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Jeff, uh, wish you well. Okay, thanks everyone for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, bye. Okay, approval of ro for local emergency management plan. And we have Bruce with us. He could give you a little update because he's worked on the update. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Bruce Richardson on the emergency management team. I hope you can hear me okay. Great, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, this is the annual update uh, as required by Vermont Emergency Management for our town's emergency or local emergency management plan. We have uh, gone through several of the annexes with the what we feel are the most important uh, information and verified the uh, names and phone numbers in it, uh, specifically. Annexes uh, one, which are the uh, contacts for the team, appendix or annex three, the media contacts uh, that we would reach out to in a case of an emergency to get information out, and also annex four, the high risk population. Uh, particularly important that we want to make sure we can reach out and uh, contact those people in the event of an emergency. Um, most of the rest of the document is largely the same as it was last for last year's version. Uh, we just need to have this approved by the select board and submitted to the state by uh, 1 May. Do I hear a motion on this? Yeah, I move to yeah, approve the, the local emergency local management, management plan. plan. And, and do we, we authorize Dana to sign that? To sign that? Actually, actually. There are. It would. It would need. You'd want to authorize. Brad to sign it. Bruce, is that right? Are there are two signatures here. Um, I believe as long as uh, it, somebody has either ICS 100 or ICS 402 for the. So I could sign it. I have the ICS 100. So I approve, I move to approve the local emergency management plan and have Dana sign it for the board. Can I second the motion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, select board liaisons, the committee's board the commission. You had started talking about this at your last meeting. Um, at that meeting, um, John, expressed John expressed interest on for the economic the development economic board. board. Justin for planning, Justin, Justin planning, for public Justin works, public work. um, and yeah, there are, there are cemetery, commission, cemetery commission, conservation commission. commission. Oh, Justin also Justin on highway, on highway. Um, uh, recreation, recreation, and then finally and the liaison, liaison, liaison for the Berlin, Berlin, Fire, Berlin Department. Fire Department. What about the police? About the police? And police. And police. I wanted to also interject that I have interest in the public work board as well. One liaison to each board. 
The trouble with two is that it would take in, um, become confusing as to who was going to be there and who wasn't. Which one do you want to do first, Dan? Um, well, I just want, and I guess my thought is that not all of these committees probably need a lot of um, visitation. I'm just trying to get so there's better communication. Um, the Cemetery Commission, for example, um, unless there's only, we're, we're short three members on that from a five member board. So. And but that is not a really not active really committee, active committee. Um, because none of our cemeteries are active. Are active. Um, I think um, it would be I good to have someone in the conservation commission. commission. And, and um, um, I don't believe you voted on any, of the, any of the others yet. Just yet. people just have expressed, people interest. Have expressed interest. So. so. Hey, John, do you have any interest in any particular boards? Well, excuse me, as I'm mute. Dana, which ones did I? You had said that you were interested in the Economic Development Board, John. And that's the only one I had for you so far. Okay. Well, let's just get them going one by one. Does anybody? So else? I guess I'd go down one by one, Brad, and just start sure. and see who wants to be on. Yeah. So what's first? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have a list. Well, it's just on my computer, so I. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I'm gonna get with it. Um, all right, cemetery commission is first. Okay. Okay. Conservation Commission is the next. I think that would be a good one to have a representative from the board on. Um, the Conservation Commission has been reorganized in the past year, and they are working very hard to become active, and they now have a full board. I can do that one. Move to a point, Brad. Down to, the down to the conservation commission, commission as a representative. I second the motion. All of all of all right. Next one, Nate. Economic Next Development Board. Board. John, expressed John expressed interest for that. For that that, uh, that committee, uh, meets, committee meets um, um, on occasion. On they don't, occasion, have, regular they have, regular have regular meetings, but meetings, also. But also it would be it would a be good a time to relook at the town's policy on its tax stabilization program. Move to appoint. I make the motion to appoint John to the Economic Development Board. Here's second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Highway, highway department, department Justin, Justin had, expressed had expressed interest in highway. in highway. I make the motion to appoint Justin to the Highway Commission. Second. Or Highway Department, I should say. Second that. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next one. Planning Commission is next. Um, Justin had expressed interest in that. And again, that was last meeting. So I'm not sure if he's still interested or not. But what, what was that one, Brad? Or what, what was that one, Dana? Pla uh, planning. Well, you had mentioned some interest in that as well, right? No, I actually hadn't. I was interested in the public work. Okay. I'm definitely still interested in doing what I can to help there. Your nomination. Your nomination. I nominate Justin for the Planning Commission. Second. Second. The next is the Police Department. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, I need a second. I can't make a second. A second. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Now you're at police. Now you're at police. Any volunteers? Cheers. I'll do it. I'll do it. Move to appoint John Quinn to the police department. <laughs> I second the motion. Any others? Any others? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Public Works Public Board. Board. I make a motion to nominate Justin. Uh, Public, Works. Public Works. That, that, that's that's what you had that's expressed what interest in, Justin. Was Public Works? Uh, no, I I did the planning commission. I think oh, Flo, did, Flo had interest in the public work, so I think oh, I apologize. I got it mixed up. I I nominate Flo for the uh, public works. I'll second that. All those in favor? Favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one is recreation, and that and board has just board become has just formed, formed, and we haven't, we haven't met, met, yet met yet due to the pandemic. The pandemic. Um, um, so you may want to hold on that one. Sounds good. And, and then, finally, and then, the last the is the liaison to the Berlin Fire Berlin Department. Department. Make a motion to motion nominate Justin. Nominate Justin. Do I hear a second? A second. Cricket. Any other nomination? Other nomination? Those in favor? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a hand count here. Hand I can't. I, I heard at least three, so, so. Uh, motion carries. Anything else on this, Dana? No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, uh, reappointment of tree warden and deputy tree warden. The tree warden and deputy tree warden, uh, Beth Doubt is the tree warden, Dave Doubt is the deputy. Um, it's a um, one it's year, a year post, and they are both, and they are both amenable, amenable to be reappointed. To be reappointed. Make a motion to reappoint. Motion to reappoint. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Other discussion? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The town road policy town data. Policy this is a project still project in, in still process. In process. I, have I have changed, changed um, how, I'm um, how I'm approaching the, um, the last call that, that, that we had talked about, about which was the which was change the in classification, classification by having a road having policy a road that policy encompassed, that encompassed um, more, um, than more than that. Um, so, so I am looking. So I am looking for um, input from you. And I know it's not gonna, this is I, gonna come back. Yeah, I, I don't know a lot of the history here, but um, could you give me the two minute short version again, just to uh, recycle my brain on this topic, Dana? Um, We've had a lot of discussion lot of about, about the about town's the approach, town's to, approach changing to changing road classifications, road classifications and how we would go about doing it. Doing it. Um, 
There is a very definite method to do it, and we certainly have to um, abide by the state statute on it. But this is also to, I guess, help clarify us of procedure of how we go forth when we have these questions come before us. So I think some of it was based on existing roads, like class four roads being upgraded to class three or vice versa, downgraded from three to four. Uh, I think it should encompass, obviously we have any new development, um, but it should work in conjunction, I think probably with our zoning. Uh, yes. I mean, if we're starting, if we, we do have some areas here in Berlin Corners that have potential for development on class four roads, and I think it's more appealing with services, you know, increase our tax revenue, if people did develop there, and it really doesn't cost the town anything to do this. Um, so we had talked about, we looked at some of the figures. Dana, do you remember? roughly what it was per mile of class three road that it cost the town to maintain after state reimbursement any of that any of that i should justin but i don't have it my head right i don't now. have those numbers either i should have them as well sorry um it was minimal it, it, it wasn't minimal but it wasn't huge um but I, I I thought we should have a policy in place that encouraged development on some of these roads. And if the town was going to allow for permits on some of these roads and it wasn't going to cost the town any money to bring the road up because with state statute, our existing class four roads can be reclassified as a class three. Um, then we should consider that as an option if we're going to be maintaining them in any way, shape, or form. Dana, on some of this, there's also some uh, town trails that are on the books, and your road yes. policy should take and uh, cover that too, because some of those very old roads that we reduced down the trails limit little, uh, vehicle traffic. I can add those. Can sure. Add those. sure. The only thing with the trails, of course, some of them are pretty poor repair and will take some uh, some monies to bring them back up. But I would think that if people want them brought back up, they should be willing to pay some of that fee or all of it. I think the class four trails are in a different category than the class four roads when you read the state statute, Brad. Um, yeah, we still we still own the right. Of the Correct. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the upgrade and downgrade piece like that. So I think we could keep it completely separate so that if they wanted to bring it up, they would have. I just, I'm just, I'm agreeing with you, I guess, is what I'm saying. It, it, the class four is different than our current class four roads. So we can maintain it and still require them to bring it up with the cost. Yeah, trails are one step below a class four. Right. And the one I'm thinking of is West Hill that comes back over by Benji. Yep. Yep. And I think there's a couple other sections of, uh, well, even Black Road goes to a class, uh, from a class four to a trail, so it comes back on the other side. Two or three, yep. Two or three, yep. So those should be included just taking keep everything uniform. Okay. I would think that when we were talking about an upgrade too, we would want to consider our revenue. So I don't know if it's based on a number, based on a number of dwelling units per distance, uh, because that's gonna give us an average. Does that make any I sense? am trying to I keep it in keep in, in, uh, in conjunction uh, with what the zoning code, the zoning code says. says, and and so and I think you said that, um, and it does specify the requirements of developers that are developing on a class four road.
Well, Sorry. Oh. Well, Dana, if you if you do that, um, it would be interesting to see. Uh, we'll see the the uh, what it comes out as. But uh, on class four, do you have any feeling from zoning about uh, how uh, the the uh, housing density? I would rather get the code in front of me and, and read. It does specify the housing density and um, and other factors that they consider. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, I guess I want to know if I'm on the right I'm on the right trail. If you'll forgive the pun. It sounds like. How long do you think? Before you would have some idea of something you can present to the board. Probably next meeting. Probably next meeting. Okay. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Do you want to um, approve of annual highway financial plan? Yes, this is the yeah, annual the report annual that report is that done for V Trans and basically. Um, they are ensuring that the town is in compliance with the amount of money that we're spending on road maintenance. Uh, every year I work with VTrans to come up with these figures. Um, expenses that we put for class two roads and class three roads um, to get a total. So the total that we have this year is 1,319,775. That is that considering is some paving work, work that we're planning. we're planning. Again, that may not that happen, may this, not year. happen um, this year, um, but, um, that's but that's okay if we okay change if we our mind. So I need the board to just board approve this so I can submit it to you. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Motion carries. Discussion on Crosstown Day. Um, as you know, Tim closed Crosstown Road late last week. Um, I have spoken with a resident over there who expressed his concern, and I did see emails from board members today uh, regarding Crosstown Road. I spoke with Tim on Crosstown Road today, or about Crosstown Road, and he asked if it could remain closed another week, but he felt it needed another week to be closed. Um, but ultimately, of course, it's up to the board what they would like, what their pleasure is. Have you driven the road, Dana? Uh, no, but it wasn't as bad. Last time I was down there, which was maybe a week and a half ago, it, I didn't think it was as bad as it had been in previous years. Uh, although, you know, we we did try and limit traffic on it. Um, I don't know how successful that was, but I think that helped it somewhat. I've I've been on that road and I was honestly shocked that it got barricaded. It seems like it's the best I've ever seen it. I was you know, I was I was shocked at how well it was really. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was a cost savings measure and that's why we closed it, but I, I figured after the email went out to the board that he wanted to put the signs up, I thought it, I thought that seemed to work really well. Maybe it was a mild mud season, but I was, I was surprised that it actually got barricaded. Justin, when you were on it, did you, were there any soft spots or was it, um, you know, muddy stretches or was it just a little, 
the only spot I noticed that was soft, but it wasn't, I mean, how you could have easily driven a two wheel drive car through it was that typical spot between Mike and Mike Rich or Gary Richardson's down to the corner there. You know, by the Boyer Farm or Boyer State, but just after Mike's. I, I mean, it was I don't nothing know, like I don't know it usually is. is. No, not at all. You know, I, I, mean, I don't know what happens if you open it up, but. I mean, I think that people were probably taking it when, like, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm sure it got some reduction in traffic, but. Yeah. yeah. I don't, it, it, I don't know how much. Um, yeah, there's just one spot that that's, you know, muddy at this point, Brad, from what I could see. The rest of it was, it was pretty nice. Better than, better than most other back roads, including my road, which I think is fine. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, it's that one spot that and you can go around it. Around it's know, not it's bad, at all. bad at all. I would, I would, ra I would like, personally, I think that's a pretty crucial piece of road. I think it would be great if we could keep it open. I'm just looking here at the weather forecast. Um, it's supposed to rain hard tomorrow. And then Wednesday is, uh, well, until Sunday, it's supposed to be good and fairly warm, so it should dry it out. So why don't we take and uh, see about Wednesday? I concur with that. That seems reasonable if we have a storm coming in. Well, I'm just thinking that the the rain will draw the frost out and by uh, Wednesday or Thursday. It should it should pretty well be done. Yeah, I mean, I I think it probably is now, but I agree with you. Okay, Danny, can you tell Tim? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Uh, Thank you, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, and now the footbridge. The um, Phil Gentilly and Tom Willard brought to my attention the poor condition that the footbridge on uh, the Darling Road Trail is. Um, and they did show me pictures. There's a lot of rot. Um, and they would like to have it repaired. They have an estimate for 4500 and they're and suggesting they that it come out of the conservation, out of the conservation fund, fund, although I'm not, although I'm not sure, sure if we can do that, but I can follow through to see how that was set up. Um, they feel it's an emergency and needs to be repaired. Is it a public safety thing? That's what they feel, yes. Could we, could we get a recommendation from the conservation committee? That's their, That's their recommendation. Oh, they are the oh, conservation committee. Okay, yeah. I, apologize. Yeah, I apologize. That's okay. That's okay. Have, we, have we, I know this is probably bringing up something from the past too, but have we ever looked at ever utilizing, looked at, I mean, I know we have yeah, looked at it, I'm going to rephrase that. Has anybody thought anybody recently thought about, about like vast and all that? I mean, I didn't have any snowmobile traffic barely by my house, but I know that they would fund a lot of those projects. That's a good question, Justin. I do not know where the vast trail is there. Would they use that area or not? There's that missing connector piece on Black Road. Yeah. So it goes this by my house and the. I know Vast was interested in tying into that trail because that would tie it into the Northfield trail system. Yeah. Uh, and if they were to do, if they were able to tie in, I, I'm fairly certain we could probably leverage them to build a bridge for us at no expense that everybody could utilize. Are, are you saying that if, and I would talk to Bass, but if, if they could um, make that, they haven't made that connector, have they? That's the only piece they're missing is basically from my house or Josh Walker's house down to the Irish Hill trailhead. 
And if they were able to make that connection, I bet they, I'm sure they would, they would do an amazing amount of maintenance. And I, I wonder how the, the, the committee would feel about working with Bass for starters. And if it was to be something they would even want to want to consider. Um, but I think that but we can utilize some of these outdoor recreation associations to help pay for some of this infrastructure in town that taxpayers would generally pay for. Uh, I, think, I think that's a good idea to explore. I mean, uh, I've kind of wondered myself why there, there isn't a connector over. I think it would bring a lot of uh, economic development tra traffic over to the store and over at Applebee's and over to the area. And, you know, if, if we were to be able to open up that trail and has to pay for the, the bridge or help with the bridge. I think it's a win-win for everyone. Well, Dana, when you, uh, you get a chance to talk to Bass, you can report back to us next meeting. And the other question I, can talk, is, I can talk with Matt, but I cannot, I don't have any suggestions on how to make the connector. Um, there were property owners there that were very adamant very that they were not, they were not amenable, to it. amenable to it. But I will talk with Matt Tatro about that. I would just think it would be worth exploring for the town and, and, and talking about. I think that we've had, what, two years, maybe a full year, and a then partial year of the snowmobile trail through the four corners. Yeah. And I don't think it was nearly as impactful as maybe people suspected. So it may it may be worth talking about again, and it may not be, but it, okay. it can't hurt. You know, I know the committee was anxious to have this job done fairly quickly. Um, I can talk with and see what they tell me at Bass. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It would. It would. The. Um, Did the committee tell you just how bad the how bridge bad was? They gave me pictures, gave which me I will pictures, email to you email tomorrow. To you tomorrow. Um, um, there are, there it's, are it's, in it's, poor it's in poor shape. Does the bridge span a brook or something? Or is it, uh, yes, it yes, it does. And I asked and if I asked you could if get around it without around using it the, the bridge. bridge. And, and you could, could but it is but kind of a rugged crossing crossing i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you well, well we can take in uh, see, see what they say hopefully, hopefully for next meeting dana meeting, and, um, and um, we can take and consider the, consider the replacement of the bridge or we can even consider whether we could just uh, uh, well basically save the money if it comes down to it and again, these are again, their these funds are their that funds, um, um, are in their, are in uh, their conservation, uh, fund. conservation fund. Fred, you're muted. Fred, I'm not you're hearing, muted. You. I'm not yeah. hearing you. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Okay, you were muted, okay. so you hear you. Okay, this is all good. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You guys are doing um, good. So, <laughs> yeah, just take and uh, see what the uh, what Bass says. If there is if they show any interest or not, and then we'll go from there. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And the next thing on the agenda was Mirror Lake. Parking, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah. That was from Angelina. I believe. Yeah, so uh, Ellen Drysdale sent an email to us. I don't know if you guys got it. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Um, just talking about uh, how for years it's been open uh, for parking for people to get out and exercise and um, considering, you know, people's mental health and being in uh, quarantine that she feels um, shocked and astonished that um, the road has been blocked. So 
I'm I'm just wanting to know. Do we know why it's been blocked and the uh, road is blocked? No, it's not blocked. It's no, not blocked. I, no, I, are you? I drove you, down. I drove down. I mean, John, that's on the way to your house. I, I think you're talking about, and I think you're probably referencing Brookfield Road. Mirror Lake Road is the backside where we replaced the culvert. Brookfield Road is the part where the pump house is. She says, hold on. Um, I'll just read it. Dear Select Board, for the 41 years I've lived on Berlin Pond, especially in the springtime, as many as a couple dozen cars have been parked on the side of the road at the north end as their occupants enjoy the quiet and beauty of the five mile loop. On the other end of the pond, in all, all seasons, fishermen, kayakers, duck hunters, and duck hunters park. Sorry, my phone went out. Uh, park on the other side of the road on Mirror Lake Road. In the north end especially, the road is wide, and the cars parked on the edge pose no danger to through traffic visibility is good, and there's plenty of room. Unsurprisingly, this year has been especially busy as people are frantic to get out of their houses, get some exercise, and enjoy social distancing safely at, the, at this time. I'm happy to slow down and wave at the steady stream of walkers, runners, and bikers as they get some respite from the stressful times. We're all in this together, right? There's a lot of talk about being kind to each other. I've been disturbed and embarrassed recently to see the no the new no parking sign and concrete block appear at the north end of the pond. My embarrassment turned to astonishment and dismay when I heard from a friend who found that her sister's car had been towed from the north end of the pond. This resulted in the two of them having to get into the remaining car together after carefully observing the six foot distancing, <clears throat> visit the police department and then fetch a car a couple of miles away and pay $85 to the tow guy. Both women are vulnerable in, the, in their seventies and were needlessly made to take unnecessary risk with three close contacts that they otherwise would not have made. She's appalled. Uh, she says, I strongly urge you to discontinue the towing unless a car is flagrantly blocking traffic. Take down the no parking sign and remove the concrete block. Perhaps you could replace the sign with one welcoming pedestrians and giving a list of safety precautions. I'd like to see my town actively seeking ways to help rather than hinder its residents and visitors in coping with the difficulties we are all facing. Sincerely, Ellen Drysdale. So, Bill, can you I, comment on that? I was on Mirror Lake Road this morning, it was wide open. And um, as far as the towing, I believe the highway fund had cars towed off there when he was doing road maintenance. But to my knowledge, we haven't towed people. The I North. Mean, particularly with this pandemic, I mean, we've been even more accommodating because we realize as this lady pointed out people need to get out of their house you need to take a walk and you need to you know get out of this uh, quarantine and, you know being stuck in their house so we we understand that and we take that into account but mirror like road is wide open right she references the north side which which the north side is the side closest you know, road. There are yeah. there are cones there are cones up there, but there were still were some parking spots this morning. Right, right, right. and there is a small block there. But if I recall, I drove around there the other day. If I recall, we, it's not really blocking any parking that would normally be parking, is it? And there's the no parking no, signs on the portion. Other had, than that, we haven't added any, have we? Other than maybe adding adding newer signs or other ones that have kind of been worn or what? We have not any signs of my knowledge, and the fact that over the weekend there were quite a few people on the pond, and cars were parked along the side of the road, and we monitored it, and they were not posing a problem. We were able to get fire equipment and ambulance and emergency vehicles through there if we needed to, and we didn't push the issue because you know we realized people need to get out. Bill, where's that? Where's the block they're talking about? 
The only thing I can think of is, is where Justin was saying on the other side there, on the on the, the northern side, close to the close to the Crosstown Road. Right up by the pump house, the new where we put the yeah. new parking area and a little launch area, Brad. Yeah, uh, you're not you're not talking about the the fishing the boat access right after it on the left where there's that little pull off area before you get to the pump house. Did Tim put the block there, or was it Montpelier? I think Montpelier might have done that. They may have, and it, it's it's not like it's blocking people from going through there. It's not really interfering with that parking area, I don't think. Yeah, what, I, what I can tell is it looks like it's trying to, to say where the parking area stops, right? It's kind of trying to define that parking area, saying, okay, you know, this is kind of the end of it because people have been parking all the way down through the road, probably on the grass on Montpelier's property near the pump house, or as you head that way. That's, that's, I, I don't know who put the block there. I mean, people are just parking around it anyways, but I think that's what they were trying to do with the block is say, here's the end of the parking area. So, Bill, you didn't take an issue any tow, any, or you didn't have any cars towed and, and uh, did um, Tim have any done? I believe he did. I believe he did. That was that was a week or so ago. Yeah, I was um, was informed after the fact, and I was also had told him that in the future to notify the police department, and they would take care of it by helping instead of hindering. Um, I'm not quite sure with this place, but let me talk with Tim and see why there are signs there. If that's on our traffic ordinance or not. Um, I think we're talking Brookfield Road and not Merrill Lake. Yeah, we are. But that's the, the north side. So yeah. Yeah. the the other thing is is if Tim was there grading and the car was blocking the grader, I can see it having a toe. And I think that was the case, Brad. Okay. Well maybe maybe that was. Do yeah, do we have an actual policy around when we tell, when we don't? Well, if they're in violation of the parking ordinance, um, we try to find the operators first and have them move the vehicles. I mean, worst case scenario, if like we've had this, this happened that when they first opened the pond up on Mirror Lake Road, the cars were so bad that you couldn't get a fire truck through there. And we did have to have a few towed then, but it's our policy that's a last resort. But I, I guess, yeah. I understand, I understand that that makes complete sense, but do we have a policy on who can call the tow company? Is it, is it well, by statute, any agent in the town? Okay. So Tim Davis as a highway phone, it's anyways an agent in the town. Okay. So he can cause those vehicles to be removed if they're hindering his road, maintenance operations, snow plowing, road grading, that kind of stuff. Got it. Got it. Anything else on this, Angelina? Uh, no, I just wanted to, you know, uh, respond to that email and and figure out what was going on with that. I don't know if there's a solution. Um, I would be glad to speak with Tim tomorrow and go over and take a look. I need to see it myself because I'm not quite sure about this block. Um, and if it's something that Montpelier did, obviously I can't help with that. But um, let me go over, take a look at the sign, talk with Tim, and I will let you know. But, and if the board is amenable um, to allow parking there, if it's, and I'll talk to Bill a little further about if it's safe for people to park there, um, which I think he's telling me yes. Um, why don't we go from there? I'll be glad to do that. Well, from what I can understand of everybody's description, where that uh, block is, is about the Montpelier property line and uh, anything beyond that, going south on Brookfield Road is uh, up to Montpelier. Mm -hmm. right. right. At that point, and my only question is, is whether it's in the right of way. Sure. Well, John, I think it, <laughs> I think it would be in the town's right away. It would be my our discretion whether or not to have them towed. 
Mm-hmm. If they were if they were on their property, completely on their property, out of the town right away, that's a different story. But if they're on our right away, then that's really a call for me or an agent of the town. To make. No, no, I'm I'm talking about the block. I'm talking about the block. If it's Montpelier's if block, if Montpelier block, put the block there, the did block they put it in our right of way, or is it completely on their property? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if Montpelier, it's, it, to me, that block is no different than a fence along the side of the road. It may be the town's right of way, but it's the property owner's property. Um, if, they're, if they're trying to, to keep people from parking on their property, even though it's a town right of way, I'm not sure just where the law goes with that one. But like, but I like John said, they're parking next to it anyway. I mean, it's... Right. You know, it's something that basically falls back on us. I mean, it, they're parking next to the concrete block. That's not hurting anything. In, in, in most cases, it's not hurting anything. So, you know, right. if, you, right. if it's the point in time where you've got cars, we've had this on Mirror Lake before, cars on both sides of the street, you know, and, and you can't get a fire truck or an ambulance. That's a different story. But uh, most people, they'll all park on one side of the road, they go for their walk, and they leave. And it's not a big deal. 99% of the time, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. But I think at this time, it was that uh, Kim felt it was hindering his um, maintenance of the road for the public. Yeah, no, that's a different story. I mean, that was his call. I wasn't involved in that one. So. Okay. Anything else on this? Anything else on this? Anything else on this? Uh, no. Uh, does anybody want to? respond to her with with that information um i guess i wouldn't know i don't know the area very well over there i th- i think we need to i think dana needs to talk with tim and see what the circumstances were before anyone can really respond at this point right yeah sounds good i will do that and i'll let you know i'll let you know okay okay um Approval of select board minutes for April 6th. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Favor? Aye. 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 What abstention? Uh, okay. Uh, Justin, liquor board? Liquor board. Move to uh, uh, recess the recess borough and select board and, select board and enter into the liquor board. The liquor board. Sorry. Sorry. Here a second. Here a second. I second that. All in favor? All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 You have an application for a second class liquor license for Martin Thomas. He is opening a business called Thomas Farm and Garden at 535 U.S. Route 302. And he is going to be having a farm store. How he puts it, a few groceries, and he would like to sell beer and wine. Any history on this fellow? This has come through the liquor uh, liquor commission, and um, they had no objection. No Move to approve. To approve. Your second. A second. All those in uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion carries. Entertain a motion to adjourn the liquor commission. Motion to adjourn. I second the motion. Would you include that motion to, to reconvene the select board? I second the motion and to reconvene the select board. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. Hi.
Okay. Uh, how did ministry's report meeting? I just had, um, I had just sent you the minutes of the emergency management um, team that recently met. Um, other than that, it's been, it has been very stressful with the uh, pandemic. Um, a lot of people have been very, I think, getting very nervous about it. Um, so I, I and, and we've been dealing with it. Um, We've been working been with working how we're going to do business, gonna do business and, and I think it's gone think fairly well, fairly well. Um, um, but, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a hard time for everyone I know. So that's really all I had to say. Dana, when you say um, people have been stressed about it, are you talking about our employees or the public that you've spoken with or both? Both. Both. Yeah. Bill, how's Bill, how are your officers are your doing officers with, uh, with uh, patrols? Are, are they are they concerned with, concerned with uh, light or light health safety or health issues, issues of, of you know contact? You know, contact? Oops, pardon me. Um, they're very concerned, and they're they're out there day in and day out, you know, and uh, facing this head on. So the the anxiety level is relatively high, and uh, given this is already a stressful occupation, as you know, is kind of adding to it. So uh, we're doing our best to uh, show up every day and do our job. And, um, and um, I've had, I'm having pretty good luck now with the PPE supply. Um, the state has been providing some of that stuff at no cost to the town. So I've got masks, hand sanitizer now, finally last week, hand sanitizer and um, face shields and goggles and stuff like that. So I'm, we're we're staffing our employees adequately with PPE, um, but again, it's it's very stressful. Very stressful. The fact too that um, the state has is housing or was as of last week housing nearly eighty five people at the Hilltop Inn transient population. Um, it adds to our workload significantly, um, and again. And again there, we've got the state is now placed some staffing in there. Things are getting a little better now. They've done, they did um, some rapid testing there last Friday and found that you know, there was no active cases uh, at the facility, which was good news for us because we were really concerned about that as well. But um, there was hard to get us handle on people social distancing in there, and it's it's getting better, but. Still, was 80 people that are housed there under one roof, it gets a little contentious at times. So it's adding to our workload and our, our stress level. Sure. And you guys are getting called there? Getting called there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering, Bill, is domestic violence gone up at all? Domestic violence so far has kind of stayed where it is. Um, we're finding people now are just becoming a little tired of being cramped in their house and we're getting uh calls a lot of people just want to talk a lot of people you know we, we've changed our response because of this we don't respond to every call in person now because for obvious reasons we do a lot over the phone but uh right now we're holding our own with domestics that haven't increased uh, to a great degree but i i see that perhaps changing if uh the longer we on this lockdown as well you know it's an inherent risk it's you know we, we have to do it it's uh i think good policy to do it but it comes with some other baggage attached do you see this changing how you actively work in the future i mean have, i mean have, you know you're you said you're taking some calls you would typically respond to you're you're util, you're doing over the phone with those maybe for the initial do you think that's a good practice that you could use down the road to be maybe I don't, I don't I don't think increase that. efficiency or anything? I, but I, just, I don't think that's how you serve the community. Um, during normal times when we're virus free, when people call, they should see a police officer at their residence. That's what they pay taxes for. And that's what we, that's the service we strive to provide. It's just that we had to take these measures now because of the pandemic. So no, so no, no. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, the short the short answer is no. But there, you know, we're always looking. There are some efficiencies I think we can glean from this. But 
you still have your exposure. You still need to be in the community. The community still needs to know we're here and ready to serve. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Anything else, Dana? Anything else, Dana? Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, round table. Round table. Justin. Justin. You're muted. Nothing though. here. Nothing here. John. Nothing tonight. Nothing tonight. Flo? Flo? There was just there was one just thing I had, and it was an email I sent to Nate, uh, Dana regarding a neighbor of mine who approached me about Pine Hill Drive and just seeing if Tim could take a look if they can do something when they have a chance. It's not urgent. But my neighbor was concerned that some of the plant mix has been pushed off during the winter season to the side, which is part of the normal spring cleanup and I know with the pandemic right now it's difficult to do all of that but my neighbor has done like uh, about three sides of his property and the side coming toward our house and on his property as well there's just a lot of push off there and I'm willing to do my part I'll you know rake some of that back too because I know Tim's busy but that's the only thing that I just wanted to address tonight because I told Mike Spencer that I would Okay, thank you, Flo. Um, thank you all. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, go back to the swimming lessons um, for the kids and, you know, the concerns about mental health, you know, the walking around Berlin Pond. And I just, I, I'm concerned for kids. What if this ends? You know, I, I don't know that it's going to end. And of course, safety is first, always. But I just don't want to see money taken from the children who have been cooped up for all these months. I have a nine-year-old, and she is going she's she's going crazy. Like, you know. So I just want to, you know, have others keep in mind that you know low-income families don't always have the the means to go and do things with their children. And I and I just think that it's important, and it's also a great preventative measure to have children learn how to swim because that is one of the main things that we do in Vermont with our children and because there's not too much else to do without having to travel so I just wanted to put my voice out there about that um <clears throat> you know and I just feel like if, if the money is there then it's there and if it doesn't get used it doesn't get used and there's no harm that's just my opinion um <clears throat> so I just wanted to talk about that and um and that's that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Angelia. Um, um, executive session, Dana. Session, Dana. Yes, please, yes, under, please. Personnel. under personnel. And just how do we do this, Dana? Do this, Dana? Well, I'm going to see I'm how we're going to do it. We're going to start recording. I'm going to ask our guests who aren't in on this in if on they this, could they sign off. Sign off. And, and we will continue. We will continue. Move to end our executive session for a personnel issue. I second the motion. All those in favor? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Dana, do you do you accept action? Accept action. I do not, Dave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. Tonight, no. Tonight. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one.